And as you can see, Argentina took out both Uruguay and Paraguay. It's definitely not easy fitting two Kauais inside of you. I know that from experience. So I think this is going to be pretty interesting because both socialism and nationalism are technically still democracies. This is kind of as far as you can go within that government type, but obviously there are two very different ideologies. According to this mod, nationalists want to limit ideals to only a certain group of people, either dividing them by heritage or language, while socialists seek to fight income inequality, racism, and poverty. They are parties of the small people willing to discard the economy to help ones affected by it. So those two definitions are kind of like the exact opposite. I think this is gonna be a fun one. I feel like we've been seeing this guy a lot. Once again, the US has gone nationalist with Richard Spencer. Of course, Canada's socialist, but that doesn't really matter because they probably won't last long. Unless they get some help from South America, because there's a lot more socialists down here. So this has been the biggest mystery to me. Socialist Denmark has, uh, well, I don't really know what the fuck's going on here. It's referred to as collective leadership but I've never seen anything like this before. We have our first two wars, Hungary versus Slovenia and Greece versus Albania. And now Germany is gonna attack the Dutch, which I'm sure their military totally isn't high right now. There goes the first faction. Of course, Canada forms NATO. As we've seen multiple times, this might keep them alive for a little bit longer. This is the first example I've seen so far of socialists attacking each other. I've already seen multiple nationalist countries do it, but here's the first within this ideology. Well, I guess the UK have Totally different plans for this video. I think we might just see nationalist communists rise to power. Austria has just made themselves look like a line of cocaine just spread across the heart of Europe. So I approve. Ooh, now Burma is going after Laos, which is kind of a unique one. Laos usually sucks, but they might get lucky with this geography. There goes the second faction, the Monroe Alliance. So I think it's safe to say we go see some conflict here and it ain't gonna be pretty. Also Bolivia puppeted Chile which is kind of interesting. I mean, they are nationalist. I figured they'd just take this whole territory over. And as you can see, Argentina took out both Uruguay and Paraguay. It's definitely not easy fitting two Kauais inside of you. I know that from experience. Oh, and there we go. There's the first nation to actually join a faction outside of just finding one. And I think Russia has been holding on to some decade old grudges. I don't think this is gonna go as well as it did last time, guys. Oh shit, Honduras just randomly got nuked. I think, I think it has something to do with yeah, yeah, it does. The, this this war that's happening. Oh, okay. This is interesting. I guess Greece has declared war on Greece. Here's one of my favorites. Saddam has declared war on Assad, which I don't really understand because normally Syria wins this conflict. And I like how it's been three years into this video and factions still haven't spread outside of North America. I don't see how that's possible, to be honest. But I think we'll see that change soon. And it looks like Macho Man Randy Savage is going to be killed in Finland. He was always my favorite wrestler. All right, shit's about to hit the fan. The US just declared war on Iraq because it's 2003. And you know, it's not like this war is gonna have major consequences that'll eventually last 15 years later. But the point is, Syria just joined the US team, which is the first nation in the old world to finally join in. Oh, and there you go, there's another one. Israel's now joined the Monroe Alliance. But I think we have a while still before a major world war because their two enemies are still nationalist. Now maybe if Turkey or Iran do something, then we go see some stuff go down. Or I guess if a third faction forms, that's cool too. Greece has joined the European Entente. Oh shit, uh, I wasn't paying attention. Canada's about to die. Yeah, basically any second now. I'm surprised they made it this long. Although Mexico might be doing some stuff too. Their justification is almost over. Damn, 630 days. Why did it take them so long? Well, either way, I don't know if the Canadians are still gonna be alive at that point. And Turkey's about to take out Greece, which is, once again, another notification I was not paying attention to. Wow, Assad, real nice job with that peace treaty with uh, Syria and Iraq and releasing the Kurds. They're just fucking fantastic borders, aren't they? Oh, I'm dumb. Okay, America was declaring war on Mexico. Well, they had a lot of time to prepare. Let's see what happens. Well, that's a pretty smart move. It's kind of a start, even though it probably won't help you that much, or maybe, this might be just one of the greatest anime twists of all time. How in the hell is Mexico pushing this hard? Well, actually, it is pretty obvious. Most of their divisions are up here and not so much down here. And there goes a big South American conflict because Brazil joined NATO and Argentina is doing their thing. Sometimes peace treaties don't make any sense to me in this game. It hasn't even been a month and for some reason, the US just won everything. The US took 22 states. Everyone else got, you know, a little bit of something. Oh, that's nice. Syrian, Mexico. Is that really what we're doing here? Oh, sweet Jesus. This is so bad. I don't even know what to say. And yeah, there's Syrian, Mexico for you, which that's just amazing. While Bolivia might just have the greatest game of their life, because remember, they also have Chile 
puppeted. So let's see what they do with the North because they might just have a really, really good campaign. I'm assuming this European Entente is going to take over as the, yeah, major socialist team. While the Monroe Alliance continues to spread to Africa, I guess the European Entente is down here too. It's just a different color. Oh yeah, and they are technically a separate team. They're not necessarily working all together. So I really wanted to test this out. I kind of wanted to see the Koreas work together without killing each other. But I was curious to see if they join the same faction because they're both technically socialist in this campaign. But yeah, it doesn't matter. They will never ever work together. They always have to kill each other, which I guess makes sense. So what needs to happen for the socialists to even have a chance here is China has to form their own team. Because obviously right now, this Monroe Alliance is way too OP. They're gonna win unless something crazy happens. But let's see, because China is going after Kazakhstan, which I've never seen that before. Kazakhstan is socialist, but they're also defending themselves from Iran. So Red Bangladesh might also be having a really good game. They just got a whole bunch of new territory and even a new puppet. Yeah, this is definitely a country we don't see do this well in Indochina. Aw oh, man, now Germany's going after Belgium, but the problem is... Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but they joined the Monroe a lot. Oh, you know what? It doesn't even matter. I guess no one decided to help them, even though technically the U.S. could have come to their aid. But just as a reminder, this is what they're fighting against so far. Just kind of random places scattered throughout the map. Nothing too crazy is happening right now. Okay, so that does not make any sense at all. The Russian Federation joined that nationalist team. Why did they do that? That's a strange one. Um, I guess it's because they're attacking Sweden or something like that, the Swedish first joined the European Entente, so I, I, it makes a little bit of sense. Still, I think it's safe to say, unless China does something crazy, this game's over. Oh yeah, and by the way, Ethiopia looks beautiful right now. I've never seen them take out just all of Sudan like this. Oh, and I guess they're communists. Okay, so um, I guess that helps explain some things. And they have Chad. Okay, wow, they're doing even better than I thought. There's the peace deal for Kazakhstan, which is pretty interesting because Iran took more states where I'm assuming China just took a little bit and puppeted the rest. Okay, I don't even know what the fuck's going on anymore. I guess Turkey already took out all of Iran, but after that peace deal, they came back to life or something. And then we have just a clusterfuck in general with these puppets and random ass places in Central Asia. Oh, and India joined the European Entente, but that's not really gonna make a difference. I mean, they're fighting so much right now. Well, of course, as we all know, their leader is probably too focused on getting those Bob's and Virginie picks. So now once again, there's a third faction, and I guess there's also a fourth up here, but South Africa just formed a team with himself, which is honestly just impressive. Oh, and that's because they're social Democrats, even though that must have been a surprising election. Well, anyways, guys, this was a pretty one-sided world. I mean, the nationalists just killed, and that's mostly because the socialists just kind of abandoned ship, like Russia, Poland, Turkey, I mean, there was just no loyalty. And of course, China's not gonna do anything because they don't they don't care what's going on. I think it's much more likely that they would just do their own thing. Because even if they didn't, they'd probably still lose. Hey, but congrats to some of these minor nations that had some of their greatest games ever. Bolivia, Ethiopia, and uh, all the way over here, Red Bangladesh. Oh, and I missed out on the fact that Sweden became the Brazilian state. I feel like that's almost as good as Syria and Mexico. Well, I will say this is definitely an interesting window. It all started because of the Libyan-Nigerian war. The US has over 100 casualties, but on the other side of things, I don't know what the hell's going on. Everyone over here has barely lost any men. So yeah, I'm very confused. This has been one weird fucking game. Ouch. Okay, so something really bad happened to the British Isles. Oh, and uh, I guess Germany is getting nuked. Is that Germany? No, that's France. Oh, that's beautiful. France was the only socialist country left in Western Europe, so I guess this isn't a surprise. And okay, so France just crumbled. Yep, this is now Algerian territory. Oh, and of course, Portugal was annexed by the Spanish state, which they usually stay around for a while, so I wasn't expecting this. And Ethiopia somehow continues to get more powerful. They are still communist, so I don't know how they're doing so well in this world. After 12 videos of Millennium Dawn, I don't think I've ever seen anyone navally invade Australia. And this has been something I've asked for since like the beginning of time. And he's not even in a faction. Like he's doing this all himself. He's doing God's work, guys. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching one of the strangest games ever. I guess socialists and nationalists could work together to an extent to kill other socialists. So that's nice. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. And of course, big thanks to Neo, Wyon, DestinyFucker9000, Jacob W, Random Guy, Jacob Scott, Elfie, Stormblade, Ethan J, Kirby, Humor Demon, Namir, Stefan M, and Furry Cruz for being my crack daddies. If you want to support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below.
Thank you so much for helping, Crackboy.